Thank you for joining XR Om, India's first AR VR focus podcast. Today, I'm delighted to have with me Mr. Arun Nadrasa, who's the founder and CEO of International Social Prescribing Pharmacy Association and Web3 Pharma. So, Arun, really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. Why don't we start with a small brief introduction and background? Yes, for sure. So first of all, thank you, Eddie, for this uh, invitation for your podcast. I'm very grateful. So my name is Arun Nadrasa. I'm a pharmacist based in the UK. I've been qualified as a pharmacist for 10 years. We had the opportunity to be involved in dancing, more specifically Cromp, where I have a very strong bond with India, where my nickname is Angel of Indian Cromp, but also in terms of technology and social prescribing where I was able to write the first book on the topic of pharmacy social prescribing, which was published back in January 2018, and which kind of led me down the rabbit hole of um, VR, XR, Metaverse, <laughs> NFT. Uh, when um, Facebook rebranded to Meta back in 21, I ever say I never looked back. I'm grateful to all the mentors I've had along the way. For example, Denis Silva, Aragon, who's also known as Mr. Metaverse, and uh, many others. So, yeah. Right. So, so Arun, what is this social prescribing? Maybe I think it'll be great if you could start by explaining that. And, and please do talk about the book that you've written. Yeah, for sure. So in a nutshell, uh, social prescribing can be defined as a personal care plan based on what matters to the patient. So we shift in the conversation to what's the matter with you, as in we're looking at the problem focus to what's the matter with you saying how can we look at other things other than medical condition to make sure that you're happy with the outcome and the process which can include not just medical treatment but it can also include for example music dancing which is how i got in social prescribing a uh, walk to the park going to the search um doing to doing some volunteering so those kind of holistic aspect which is also defined as the social determinant of health as the rich can have a massive impact on the patient outcome in terms of health and well-being. For example, if someone has broken windows, of course, if it's a 80-year-old patient, they're going to suffer from recurrent chest infection because of hypothermia. But us at the end users, if you're trying to help them, you're just going to give them more antibiotic, not understanding that the root cause is a broken windows. So that's an example where you could have within social prescribing three specific rules. So you have a link worker, a health and well-being coaches and a care coordinator. The link worker can come to the patient house, have a conversation of three to four hours to kind of find out what is their life goal, what they want to do, what's the passion, create a plan based on what they say to the link worker, and then from around connect that person to the different locality in the city, which is known as community asset. A gym is a community asset. A dance class is a community asset. But once she did that, that's when she found out about the broken window. So what she's done, she connected. Uh, contacted the housing association in the city to provide funding and get um, the window fixed, which as a result prevented further event of hypothermia, therefore reducing the cost to the NHS. And that was a single intervention. That's the power of social prescribing. Right. Yeah. So, so I hope that you know the healthcare industry understands the power of social uh, prescribing. Maybe it's a mix and match because I guess you know. Uh, right now, the healthcare industry just tries to address the problem with a solution. And the solution itself is so very broad because we still haven't gone to precision medicine where we can address a specific concern of the of the human health problem. You know, I mean, we bombard uh, the patient with a medicine which could address that uh, specific concern. Plus, uh, I mean, bombard the patient with other uh, problems also. I mean, through history, I think at least here in India, we, we've, we've done it in a very holistic approach where we've tried to find at least Ayurveda and everything. It goes to the root cause of the problem. Like, what is the problem? And can can it be, besides maybe the healthcare, is it like some other problem? And can can these social, uh, uh, like dancing you mentioned, or taking a walk, uh, you know, and, and, and just uh, being, figuring out how do you be more happy? You know, th th those were a very mix and match to you know, looking at health. So I think you rightfully pointed out, I think we need to leverage the old with the new to create the future. And, and that's that's the best way to uh, go about it, rather than this very 
uh, you know, rapid approach of, okay, let's, let's find tech or, or uh, you know, to, you know, find a solution for, for something. So, so you're, you're the founder CEO of International Social Prescribing Pharmacy Association. Maybe can, can you talk about the company? Yeah, of course. So, so when I first wrote my book back in 2017 and then published in January 18, it was basically in the belief that my book would inspire more pharmacists to uh, take social prescribing more seriously. Because for me, I, I went into social prescribing through dancing because there's a course called Dance for Parkinson, which leads to what it says, which is dancing for people with Parkinson to slow down the progression of the symptom, build the muscle in the leg, they're less likely to fall. And also to connect with other people with the same conditions as they felt less socially isolated. Because once someone is socially isolated, that is equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So you could even say social isolation is a, a disease on its own. So when I did that course and I saw the magic of dancing for people with Parkinson's, I said, I need to write a book on the topic. So the book name is Pharmacy Movement. Instead of being Pharmacy Dance, I felt it would be more professional to call it Pharmacy Movement how to prescribe social and digital medicine, which in the book are emphasized on the dancing part and digital medicine more like, for example, digital app like Headspace, Sleep You. And from there on, what happened is I felt that I needed some kind of organization, not just my name, but like a banner for people to come and share my vision. I did a collaborative work with uh, Dr. Mary Ann Essam, which is also known as the godmother of social prescribing in the UK. Well, once I released the course on Udemy, which is like a open platform, I think we had over a thousand students as of now from, I believe, 45 countries or probably more. I have to double check the statistic. Um, but then it kind of gave me momentum and inspiration to keep pushing the brand, the association name. So that's when I launched the Pharmacy Social Prescribing Conference, PSPC 2021. And then again, 2022, with the focus on Web3 technology. But then also I give an opportunity to give a talk on social prescribing last year to IPSF, the International, no, the Indian Pharmaceutical Association Student Forum, where I briefly talk about Metaverse for five minutes. And then the president at the time, his name is Yog- Yogendra, Kash approached me saying, it'd be nice to do a hackathon. And we brought them together. So he decided to do it two days, which was a huge success. And we decided to do it again with the new president, with Sina, who's a last year winner, but also the current president, which was a month long, which was a huge success. Talk a little bit about your the hackathon itself, you know, because the last two years you have like successfully put it up, you know, and and I had the privilege to be the guest of that. And you know, I mean, maybe talk about that and how has that helped uh, the students, uh, pharma students uh, community? So when I did the hackathon, I was promoting social prescribing and the metaverse for nearly two years now, give or take. And most of the people in UK didn't really see it. It was only the tech people that kind of understood the concepts. Oh, that's a nice idea. But I didn't meet any like-minded pharmacists. So when I connected with Yogi, that saw the vision and said, actually, I want to do it. It's almost like created like a exponential growth in idea generation. So when I approached several people, including yourself, thank you, Eddie, and Aragon and Mark, and also another gentleman from Australia, he ended up, what I had in my hand was almost limited to what I knew because like I'm 35 now but last I was 34 but still it was based on the conversation I had but then the people that did the presentation blew my mind because in a sense they only had two days so one day where they had to prep and the second day they had to do presentation in a topic they'd never heard before so in between 24 hours I had to go from zero to 100 percent to give a presentation to like international judges so I wasn't sure how, where they're going to pull it off. But then the team that really stood out to me would sign that, uh, who blew my mind, like really impressed me with the concept of using CPR in a virtual environment in order to enable any citizen in India to perform CPR, know the right technique, with the end goal to improve life and save life. So for me, it was mostly focused on health and well-being, but Sina went straight to saving people's lives in India because I'd... I haven't lived in India that long, so I don't know what the health system like, but they were able to take a, like a technology and create a solution with the end outcome to improve the health and well-being of Indian citizens. So when we went for the second edition, I already said to myself, okay, we need to make it bigger. If they can put this off in two days, 
what would happen if you give that platform to pharmacy students in India for a month long. So at the time when I kind of discussed the signage, we only had two people involved with the hackathon in terms of externally company. And I said to Sana, let's do a month long. Like he said to me, Aaron, that's great, but we don't have that many partners to do it a month long. And I said, it's okay, don't worry. Uh, let me quickly do a timetable. So I made up a timetable in 10 minutes with different topic I thought would be good for the pharmacy student. Send it to him. Okay, that's our initial draft. So every Sunday, I will wake up at five o'clock in the morning and do a presentation. And it was initially meant to be just me. But I just gave energy to the universe. That's what I want to do because I believe they'll benefit the pharmacy student. And believe it or not, the universe responded back. Then I had different companies, different people coming in and say, hey, Aaron, that's what you're doing. It's quite cool. Uh, I can come and help. Or actually, Aaron, what you can do is I can help you with this kind of sponsorship package, which include, for example, getting Movela involved. We had students go to the HQ in Bangalore. We had Agile Lens providing ticket to the upcoming conference. We had dot find that said they can provide like free dot domain to the top five team. Then recently we had Jerian and Aragon from the East Mr. Metaverse to provide free entry to the online course called Fluent in AI. It's just the positivity and love from the community, like technology company to support pharmacy students just inspired me so much. So which inspired me to keep going. So I'm so excited for season three. Like now we kind of made like a strong partnership with excellent company. So we can definitely keep building on the partnership that we established. And also a bit of anecdote is that when we announced the Hackathon launch on the 2nd of July, I actually did the video. And believe me or not, I went to the IPSF website, literally the student organization internationally, which listed every single student organization, every single country. So I literally spent two hours, click on each one, finding the Twitter and Instagram. And when I put on my video, I tagged them on Twitter and Instagram, all the pharmacy organization students across the globe, Europe, America, Asia, South Asia, East Asia, and nobody responded. And I said to myself, you know what? I did my part. But as I can't say, the, the 18 that took part in the competition for Hackathon, for me, they're not the top eight in India. I strongly believe that the top eight in the world, which is why I made that mutual declaration that by 2025, I said five years, but then Dr. Jane Thomas said, let's do it for 2025. By 2025, India would be number one for innovating the meta pharmacy model. Lovely. Uh, I, I don't wish you the very best. I think, you know, we need evangelists such as yourself to create a sustainable ecosystem and, and empower the students and, and, and explain to see, I mean, you know, the magic that's happened. Are, are there any products or, or, or these ideas uh, which were there, the hackathon turned into reality as in startups, which is like, you know, uh, that, that's my first question. And the second is uh, maybe uh, explain or, or talk to our audience on how metaverse can help healthcare. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like coming to the student project, I'm so thankful to all the partners that we had for the hackathon. For example, ATXR, Ozone, Bezel, Imagikai AI, Scenario, uh, Blocked Game with um, Skybox Lab um, to kind of provide the platform also CSM AI. So basically, they were able to provide tools for the student to go having an idea to the head to actually putting out in the universe for people to see. So even though the old farms is student and the core focus of course should be education, <laughs> finish education if you, if you can, is they were able to get the test of entrepreneurship and all the entry that entered the competition, the, some, like the top five, I think, now top six created a metaverse platform scene. So surely they can polish it further to increase the quality of the content, improve the level of special experience, include different companies in terms of like targeted marketing. So those students are kind of given the flavor. And from what I understood from yesterday's final announcement, we have one of the leadership team at IPA, which is the parent body of IPSF, that be contacting each different team individually to see how they can kind of scale up the idea into potentially a startup product. Because definitely, if you look at the top three and no, not even top three, the top eight are definitely startup ideas, but the top two really stood out because they were able to kind of 
come up with an idea with a product to potentially a monetization strategy for the benefit of the health and well-being of the Indian citizen, but also global citizen. Some of the immediate use cases I can think of is, for example, with the launch of the world coin, many people seem to be quite like reluctant about it. But for me, I wasn't looking at it in terms of identification for like world coin itself. I was thinking the core idea of, of proof of humanity. So right now we're using everyone is using smartphone, which is very really easily accessible across the globe for most of the population. I believe that within the next five to 10 years, it become business as usual on to be wearing either XR headset or potentially some kind of implanted chips in our mind, in our brain for like BCI brain computer interviews. And from there on, I foresee patient entering into a metaverse pharmacy, if can it be abbreviated as a meta pharmacy, talk to a patient, uh, so a pharmacist avatar. And me as a pharmacist avatar, which I'd be doing at the comfort of my own home, I need to confirm that the person in front of me is an human and not the AI powered avatar. So it's like um product like the WorldCon can help me assess whether that's a genuine patient. And when I do the consultation, I can then prescribe medication to the patient, which gets delivered either by a physical person coming in the patient house or thanks to my mentor's um, podcast, I think it was last year, he mentioned about drone delivery. So Aragon was the one that kind of said, we can do delivery with drone when I did a podcast with him last year, which really inspired me. So you can either be a physical in-person or a drone delivery. And from there on, we can also look at the biometrics generated from variable devices from the patient, which can be the Fitbit, which could include the heart rate, the blood pressure as the devices get better and better, the ECG, the person's heart rhythm, the blood glucose level across 24 hours. So all this value and idea can be potentially providing a constant information to me via an AI agent within my metaverse scene. For met, I mean, meta pharmacy scene. So in order to have the patient, I could be saying, "Hey, uh, Mr. Smith, what do you recommend based on his biometrics and the blood glucose level the past twenty four hours?" And taking all these complex numbers and ideas into an easy to deliver, concise information to me to help me augment my clinical knowledge and advice to the patient so it makes it more relevant. And if it's like any red flags, so what we mean by red flags is like any symptom that require urgent hospital admission. Is like any red flags that get flagged out to my AI agent where they can either tell me or I can look at the result and say, okay, Mr. Thompson, based on your blood result and what I've seen so far, you need to go to a &E now. Or stay where you are, let me arrange the ambulance to come to you. This is only possible with like the technology itself. Right now, if I have someone coming to the pharmacy, I only have a snapshot. But then with technology, I can have the whole history of the past week as an example. And also coming back to the topic of precision medicine, there is also going to be the emerging field, in my opinion, of precision social prescribing, whereby combining the genomic profile of the patient, as well as the locality data of, uh, for example, the income, the level of education, any nearby uh, shop, gym, that could help contribute to the health and well-being of the patient. And from there on, they are able to make a decision on what to do next. Because social prescribing is more like talkative, but then by using technology, we can augment that talkative skill set to go from social prescribing to precision social prescribing when you combine the genomic profile of the patient. Lovely. Uh, any advice to students and entrepreneurs who want to get into metaverse? Yeah, definitely. I say find mentors, read books, listen to podcasts, go to networking conference and use LinkedIn a lot because a lot of the metaverse influencers which I've met, including you, is through LinkedIn. So do use LinkedIn to your advantage. Uh, try to join Discord channel to kind of find out any project that you think will benefit for you personally, but see professionally. So you can meet like-minded people. They can become your mentor eventually. So definitely be more active, vocal on what you want to do because many people will not understand what you're trying to do. But being vocal, uh, the universe will respond in kind and connect you with the right person. Like for example, we have LinkedIn, Twitter, but also for the NHS organization, we have something called Viva Engage, which is called Yama. I only got an invitation to join, I think, last month. And I started to use it to act as a voice for my top on the topic of like technology. And already two 
post went viral. Like one of the like both posts went to have two hundred fifty thousand views, and a lot of it were like positive comments. And that was only possible because of me trying to create a group with just myself talking about technology, right? So. Lovely. Uh, Arun, really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. My last question to you, Meta Dance. <laughs> You're the Chief <laughs> Meta Officer at Crumps, Kings uh, and International Dance of Legends. How, how is Meta was being leveraged for dancing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the beauty of the Metaverse and all the technology around it is definitely the concept of blockchain. So, for example, when you look at the music industry itself, when someone is able to create a song, they can monetize from this, like the, the voice itself, right? And the music composition. But when it comes down to dance, if I was to upload a dance move that goes viral and then Fortnite tried to text that dance move to put it as an emote into the game, I don't get in royalty. They won't attribute the, the creativity to that dance move itself. But with blockchain, what's being possible is, for example, capturing the patient, the dancer's movement and save it as a animation file, which can be then sold off on any NFT marketplace like OpenSea and so on. So right now you can create a movement using the Movela equipment, the Movela mocap suit, or you can use Deep Motion, which is like a um, avatar recognition to recognize your movement. And also they like Move AI, which is a startup in India, uh, sorry, in uh, UK. So it's Move AI in UK, Deep Motion in America, and Movela, which I believe was launched um, as well for a long time ago. So by leveraging the mocap technology, uh, movement, like basically movement avatar animation, it will empower all the dance artists to attribute the creativity and choreography to a set of movement, which you can then sell off to different companies, to different individuals. And also if that movement is being used quite a lot, they could potentially receive royalty from the sale of that dance NFT, right? And I think that'd be a game changer because most of the people that do make it in dance, because my cousin, my wife's cousin is basically, his name is Jaya Ravindran, who is like a very famous YouTuber in, in UK in the dance style of Kutu and has millions of views. Like one way can monetize is from, for example, YouTube views, also dance classes, and potentially giving one-on-one -on -one session and organizing dance competition or dance conference. But the problem with that is that like the minority, but what I see with technology with meta dance and metaverse dance is to empower every single art, dance artist across the globe to leverage from their creativity and monetize from it using blockchain technology, of course, using the metaverse platform so they can basically teach dance classes, not in a dance studio, which is a cost to them, transport fee, and also time and uh, money from the student to come to their class. They can do it in the comfort of their own home, which is like a, a metaverse dance studio or meta dance studio to save money on cost, save money on time, and just deliver the class there and then, where right now they either need to be wearing some kind of mocap suit to reflect the movement, or they can use a free version of not using any devices like deep motion, uh, move AI and the student can learn at the comfort of their own home. So that'd be a new way to digest information instead of being like a 2D screen on YouTube. It probably like a special experience, for example, with the Apple Vision Pro 3, 4, or Meta Quest 5, 6, or any newcomer like Ajna Lens. Let's give a shout out to Ajna Lens, which is a Indian made uh, XR manufacturer for headset. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So I think the future is so awesome. I mean, Sony's Mocop is one of the other uh, companies which is leveraging uh, uh, motion capture, you know, and uh, like you rightfully mentioned, I think in the next few years, creator economy is going to be so, so big, you know, because anybody and everybody who's a creator, who's largely been uh, manipulated in today's Web3 world, in, in, in the uh, Web2 world, in the Web3, the creator will be able to monetize of of what he or she is doing so i think we're entering a fantastic world keep on doing what you're doing you know right right from empowering students uh and entrepreneurs through your social prescribing to your metaverse hackathon and, and the metaverse dance you know we need more evangelists such as yourself to create an ecosystem and i wish and i hope that 
now it, the metaverse hackathon goes global and it becomes like a global metaverse hackathon rather than just indian so more power to you keep on doing what you're doing and to my listeners if you like what you see in here then please press the subscribe button until next time see you guys bye thank you thank you i really appreciate this